we're at the time of year where it's appropriate to start pruning apples. Uh, this is definitely not going to be a video about how to most appropriately <laughs> prune apples. That's not a strong point of mine. But I know I need to go into these old feral wild trees and bring them down quite a bit. Uh, they're, they're compressed on themselves, they're locking into themselves and into each other, and I've got a whole lot of other interesting things that I want to plant out in the understory, which uh, more light and nutrient access would be great. But what I'm thinking, so I made a video a number of years ago, it's one of the first videos I made, where I talked about an observation that I uh, chanced upon in the landscape, that where apple prunings were left on the ground, rabbits and deer would come and nibble them and deposit a ton of manure and urine in exchange for eating the ramule wood of these prunings. These prunings don't have much value to me. I'm not going to be getting firewood from them. And so if I could uh, repeat that experiment in a more thoughtful way, my intention is to go through with this little electric chainsaw and prune these trees to the best of my ability to open them up and renew them, but to take all those prunings and deposit them it's a little hard to see in the snowy landscape, but this whole open glade is a whole series of fugal mounds that are pretty carbon heavy. Lots of straw, lots of logs and branches buried under the snow. And a little bit of this is my foot track uh, traffic, but a ton of this is deer. And near to the hedgerow, tons of rabbits. And so my thought is to lay up all the prunings on these fugal mounds to encourage the deer and rabbits to come and eat them and deposit a ton of manure and even use their hooves to kind of break up the material. Come spring, I can remove all the branches and either weave them into my living wall, the boundary over there, or turn them into charcoal and then biochar. Um, but it's a way of leveraging, uh, basically almost like it feels like alchemy, to take the nutrient that's locked up in the ramule wood of these trees and give some pleasure to the wildlife that's here and put that uh, functionality in the landscape where I need it and then avoid having to bring fertility and manure later. So this will be a two-part video. I'm going to do that pruning and that layout today and talk about it a little bit and then I'll follow up in a week or two and we can see whether or not it's working and whether or not uh, manure and fertility is being focused where I'd like it by putting the prunings where I want them to be eating. Might as well work with nature rather than trying to fight it. It's too big to fight, that's for sure, and fighting's not that fun anyway. So let me get to it and then we'll pick it up once I've got some branches laid out. I'm going to pause here because I've run out of uh, charge on my little electric chainsaw, but I was managed, or I've managed to be able to go through one or two of the smaller trees and work their tops down a little bit. Again, I would hope you don't choose to dislike this video because I'm doing pruning techniques that are not uh, up to snuff or what have you. Again, this isn't a, a pruning technique video, more so that it's stacking functions. I'm still learning how to do the pruning. Um, I know one of the goals I have with the smaller wild trees is to bring their canopy down a little bit, take water sprouts out, and open them up so I hold the option of being able to graft onto them later. And But the main focus is all of this pruned material is being laid up where future garden beds are intended to be. And so if I scan through here, you can see here's where I've been laying up hay and manure and wood chips and logs for a while, getting ready to plant this out, this whole area in here. There's another hugel mound with some branches on top. And then this is where I ran out of electricity. I was getting this tree worked down a bit. I still have some bigger sprouts to take out and some shaping and internal cleaning to do. But this whole area has just been wild brambles, and so I've laid up this pile here as well. What I'd like to do is I'll come back in a week or two. I need to come back out with a friend and a taller ladder to get up into these trees to do better pruning work um, and make sure I'm fully charged and have some hand saws and pruners. And it'll be an opportunity then to review how effective this is in drawing in rabbits and deer. One thing I know I'm trying to suggest here is to avoid, I don't know if I've been clear with this, I would not try this in an existing orchard where you've got young grafted high value trees to take the prunings and deposit them near those trees because I think it certainly will be a magnet for the wildlife. This area, it's mainly herbaceous plants. I've got some yasta berries, some black currants, some grafted Carpathian walnuts, 
things that I'm not too concerned about deer or rabbit browse on, and that I know I want to move this into a more complex and high value area later. And so it's a way to kind of have those pruned branches pause in the landscape and hopefully provide a yield of uh, their ramiel wood and bark being transitioned into high value manure. So we'll see how that works. It's an interesting experiment. These two big wild trees, I really need to work down quite a bit. This southern one, the one closer to us, produces a very late, late, late yellow apple. Very tart, but I like it. And it's an incredible lure for deer. So I'd like to manage this tree as kind of like a big canopy tree that can be a place that I can hunt if I need to in November, December. The tree to the north of it, this will be for a future video, but as of working on it today a little bit, I'm realizing this tree did not make great fruit for the last number of years, and it has a shape that's interesting with, my thought was to actually pollard this at about six feet, more or less all the way around, leave one stem to be itself, but then promote new whip growth this year, and then graft onto that a whole bunch of different varieties of more interesting apples. Be interesting to get people's feedback on that, because right now this is just an incredibly lanky, not very delicious, uh, red-ish mealy apple. <laughs> so anyway, that's laying up uh, tops and brush in exchange for manure from the wildlife while we wait for spring to come around. We'll see how it goes. I'll do an update video soon enough. Thanks.